Hey guys, I'm hoping you can see me. I'm in frame. I had to flip the view on my camera. So today we can get in and work on this very little tree. This is a, um, I think it's three and a half inches tall right now, um, a Kingsville boxwood variety. And this tree is in refinement and we need to be very careful with our very tiny trees that we make sure we are keeping our branches and everything in proportion to the size of our tree. So we want to come in now here in early fall and do our pruning work on any of our trees that are in refinement because we don't want our branches to be thickening and developing coarseness in the structure. So we are on purpose using this time of year to reduce the photosynthesizing capabilities of the tree, reducing the surface area of our canopy so that we are uptaking and storing less energy and less energy is going to that vascular growth. Um, very different than how we would be, how we handle our earlier trees in development, which we're not touching right now. Um, so the big thing I wanna do on this one is, if we come in, we have this really nice kind of trunk that comes up here and we have this branch shooting off here that it does offer some nice taper, but I wanna pick one of these. And I left both of these on because I didn't know the decision I wanted to make last year. So we could either go with this kind of offshoot over there, which does have really nice movement. But I think I'm wanting to go with a more traditional broom style upright tree. And I'm thinking I actually want to take it off. Um, neither of those answers is wrong. This tree can go either way. It's just a personal preference styling idea and how you want to develop it. That would be very, very nice, especially if we put it into a little or cascading pot. I have to make the cut though, or I'm going to keep talking myself out of which way to go with, and we'll be sitting with two branches three seasons from now. these two little lower growths right here. I'm going to leave those for now because that will help again heal that wound we just created and this one. So moving up in the canopy here, it bifurcates into two. We have a lower one here, but we can't really see it. So we want to expose our itty bitty little trunk line because the same rules that we're applying to developing our big trees and seeing trunks and branches is going to apply to our little littlest trees and be even more important. There's a crotch growth coming out right between that bifurcation. This branch is coming out to the front here it's actually a really nice branch but we're going to just reduce it back to here coming up we have another one coming out there left left Oop. see what's going on in the back here Again, creating every other branch. We're gonna take off this lower one that was in front because we have a lower branch coming out here. And then we'll stick with this one, but we'll be taking this one off. It comes up, it bifurcates again here, and we're actually going to take this tip right back to this bifurcation. coming out here, there, left and right. Let's take off our central stem. And cut these just back. There we 
go. This one's coming out to the side and we're just gonna reduce that tip back. These longer leaves, I'm just cutting in half. That one's good. We move up. We have a crotch growth coming in. We'll just take that off. We come up, we have left, left. We're just gonna cut these back. Now I do need to thin out inside this part here. So I am going to, let's see, take this piece off. This has become awfully thick and I have a smaller branch above and below it. Lift. Let's take this back. It's a dead piece. And we're going to take this part off. Right. I think that's it on this little tree. It's the back. And I think right in there is technically probably where our front is going to be. But let's go grab our next tree. So I hope I'm not talking too loud, but it's a very brisk, windy fall day. Um, so this is a Chinese elm in refinement. Primary structure, secondary structure is very much set. Um, but, and we don't have a whole lot of pruning to do with this tree this time of year because we did go in and do a very, very thorough pruning on this tree right after that spring flush. Did it a lot of bud branch selection. So now it's going to be removing anything that we really don't want. Like right off the bat, this one is coming straight down from underneath and we are going to take that off because we had this nice one coming out right here. Um, we want to prevent the thickening and elongation of these um, tertiary pieces of growth also. So we will be uh, cutting back. Um, if you recall, when we've worked Chinese elms before, that we are really cutting back to uh, maybe the third or fourth leaf depending on where we want, how long we want that branch. Um, that we don't count in a Chinese elm, that very, very first one that it puts off, because that is a unreliable leaf that doesn't necessarily have a bud, also known as a Sousa leaf. Focus. I was getting a little squirrely there. With your Chinese elms, start on one branch and then go from there. Or you're gonna get lost in your tree. So 
So I'm just going to keep cutting back and working through this tree now. All right, that is it for this early fall pruning work on this Chinese elm that is in refinement. Um, we are working on cutting back and keeping our um, apical growth right here, very fine, very short. And we are working on bringing these, this, the branches in this area, allowing them to come out to blend. We don't want set pads like we do with our, you know, when I'm working with the junipers and stuff, we do want branch levels that are discernible, but a deciduous tree isn't necessarily made to look like a, um, that is one look you can do. It's not my preferred look. Um, we'll see that more on the boxwoods because they're very easy as a very small leaf evergreen to develop like that. Um, but that's the plan moving forward. We may go in then once this tree has dropped all of its leaves and do some of that structural work because that's when we want to get in and look at our winter silhouette without the canopy um, masking or hiding things and making those big cuts for the betterment of that tree um but let's get this back on the bench and grab one more tree that we do have to get in for this early refinement work pruning this is a kingswood kingswood kingsville boxwood that has definitely seen better days um, this was a tree that was hit very hard with a disease very common to boxwoods, um, a fungal disease, where I had to go in and had to cut off and remove a large amount of the tree this spring in order to save it, because um, there isn't otherwise a really good treatment um, for the... I'm having a brain fart. It wasn't boxwood blight, it was a the vermiculite, not vermiculite volutella blight. Um, in addition, we had lost a branch completely here. It had completely snapped off. I don't know why. Um, it was literally snapped off and sitting there. Um, I did a approach graft method and put it back together, bound it up. That was over three months ago. And that approach graft has taken. We're going into that fall vascular growth spurt. We're not touching anything on this branch yet. Um, and maybe next year in the fall, we would take that binding off and check it to make sure it's healed up. Right now we know it's good because not only did this branch not die here three and a half months later, but it has started to push new growth. We're just gonna leave that branch alone. One of the big areas of the tree I had to remove was actually coming out right here. So we have a big naked hole here, but we've had so much growth here that we can now spread this out in the opposite, into that side. And it was actually last fall wired to pull it in that direction. But since we're working with living art, what we do one season, we might have to undo the next season. Um, so this had been pulled up back this way to fill some area here. We had a nice branch that was coming out right here, but that has had to have been removed since then. So now we're going to pull this this way and we have all this new stuff on this side that will fill that area. So I just undid the wire that I had placed last year and I'm just going to bind it to a branch now here and now we have refilled that area 
And if we look here, we have new growth and branches coming out to fill this area. So that part is done. The only thing I need to go in now is to do some cutbacks here and clean out any old old leaves that are yellowing off. In this tree, I am now too, because of everything we lost, I'm looking to promote further interior budding on the backs, backswood, boxwood, which it does back bud, as we can see right here, well on old wood. And these have become very, very long with all the growth out here. So I'm going to cut back hard and hopefully as this tree is rehabbing through the next couple seasons, that's gonna be something that it's going to give us. I'm removing any dead branching in here. What the cutbacking, cutbacking, is that a good word? I don't know. What these cutbacks is gonna do is gonna hopefully then push more of that growth back to those inner branches and hopefully we'll get more back budding. And if we do, this should be a really, really nice bonsai tree in the future. We're always planning and styling and doing our work, not for the right now, but for the future of that tree. This is a opposite leaf formation evergreen. If we were going to be doing big structure work on this, on a evergreen type like this, we would do that after generally the spring push. Once it has reaccumulated energy and hardened off. The Kingsvilles make really, really nice boxwood, or boxwoods, of course they make squirrel. Uh, really, really nice bonsai because their leaves are already very very small i'm sorry i'm disturbing a little spider and his web here oh well i also because this tree did have that fungal issue this last spring and we almost lost this tree, um, which is a fungal disease that has been moving across the US, um, carried with and secondary many times to the boxwood blight, which there's no cure for boxwood blight, except you need to kill your tree. So I'm going to keep working through this tree and doing um, just some cutbacks in some of these areas to promote more interior budding because this tree looks really, really goofy with the growth being out here. We do have some of those back buds here. We're leaving this branch alone. We have repositioned that branch. And that's gonna wrap up then our fall pruning that we have. And hey guys, Candace here. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> Actually, you guys may not have left, but I did leave. The kids were retrieved from school. Um, Parent-teacher conferences were put, got done. And volleyball practice was done. And now we're back to finish this tree up. So I am just going through and I am closely examining pieces in this tree. Um, also, just to make sure we don't have any continued signs of a fungal issue. I have kept my boxwood trees very separate from their um, places on the bench. I have not put them by each other due to that simple reason that we have both the boxwood blight and volutella blight that have been moving through the area the last couple of years, the last, really the last year. Um, and there is a video on that if you're interested and you have boxwoods. Um, and We do have just some internal um, old leaves shedding off, completely, completely normal with an evergreen. Um, I 
like to go through my trees branch by branch and not do a hedge prune. Um, you definitely could if your boxwood isn't going to be showing sometime soon. Um, go through and do just a hedge prune back to silhouette. Um, but I actually really do enjoy kind of that meditative work through the trees and that detail, you know, that detail work. Um, if I had a whole bunch of 7,000 boxwoods to be working through, now that might be something, you know, that were in development, that might be something different. And I may just go through then and choose to do a hedge prune. I'm also removing just stubs as I work in here. And you really, if you're gonna go in and really, you know, work your tree in this manner, especially this time of year, it's really nice because you get to, you go in and you're um, checking for any little spider webs or insects or, you know, things to be proactive with before we bring these into, you know, a cold room or something. So I'm just gonna keep working through this tree and hopefully it doesn't have any more insults through the next year. <laughs> All right guys, so I have finished up on the cutback on this um, boxwood that is in refinement. Um, This is the approach graph that we're just leaving the side B until we know that this has been successful. So far it has been, um, but we'll revisit doing anything with this branch next season. This is the side that we had lost quite a bit of our foliage mass had to be removed due to that Volutella blight this last year. So hopefully we can get some more back budding in here to fill this up. As I'm working through this tree though, Sometimes the trees are going to give us lemons and we have to see how are we going to make lemonade out of this if we don't get that. Um, so I have been looking at other possible fronts that we could use on the tree because the tree as a whole is, you know, it's a fairly nice tree, especially for a boxwood and it's an old tree. So we have a few other fronts if that doesn't work. Obviously it would need to be reorientated into a pot, but... That I think actually looks fairly decent. We would take off this gin here because I don't want a gin coming straight out, but as a whole, we still get that movement up through our tree and it doesn't look like we're missing anything superly out of proportion. So right in here, I feel like that would be a nice option for a, another front if we have to change how we're gonna view this tree. Um, also, as far as the best view for the base of our tree in Arnambari, it would be this view. And there are some things we could do because right now it's fairly blocked with this, what's currently our back branch, low branch, to give that depth through the tree from this viewing angle. But we would easily, could easily, move up and wire this branch up in this area. Probably cut back here and cut back some in here. And that would, that would expose now, we lift, it cut back some, angle it a little bit. And now we have this really nice exposure In that trunk line. So I think overall this would probably be our best front to encompass this really really nice wide base. Let's come in just a little bit. Whoa. Don't worry I'll get you. So we have you know this really really nice wide base down here can't see because the sun glare. I can't see if you can see. Okay. 
nice bark. I do love this pot. It's probably one of my favorite pots. Too bad the tree went to hell this year in a hand basket. Um, but yes, so we could, we have the pieces to build a nice tree, a nice front on this side. We would lift this piece up and then cut back these a little bit. Expose that trunk. Yeah. Even just lifting this offers an option. But, all right, that's it for today. I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. Next up on the agenda, what we're going to be doing next time we get together is I will be cleaning and putting my cold frame together and cold storage room and show that to you guys. Um, I know that had been highly requested um, to see what we do in our area, in our cold zone to keep our trees safe, but also allow them what they need for their dormancy and their species requirements. Um, and we'll probably be breaking that up, checking back in with me as I'm going through that and we'll also be doing a very special October repotting because um, we will be in the first week of October next time you see my face. Um, don't freak out. There is a tree that we repot in October. So that's coming up next. And as I probably already said, have fun. Have fun with your bonsai.